no one has found the missing Thunderbird photo. However, there are many recreations online, some purported to be the original. While memories of the Thunderbird photo date back several decades, none of the versions on the internet appear to be the original image that people remember. Almost all of them have a provably recent provenance or have been debunked as modern hoaxes. Many people claim to recall an iconic black and white image of several men posed with the body of an abnormally gigantic bird or pteranodon. Often, the enormous creature is nailed to a barn behind the men. In many cases, it is said to originate from Tombstone, Arizona, published in the Epitaph newspaper. Witnesses believe they saw this old photograph in the pages of a magazine, newspaper or a book, or perhaps on television. For some people, the online fakes are the versions they remember. The purpose of this new video series, Thunderbird Photos Exposed, is to showcase the many Thunderbird photo candidates and to share the facts, when known, of each image's history. This is, without a doubt, the image presented most far and wide as representative of the Tombstone Thunderbird photo, or as being the genuine article. In reality, it is the creation of talented British digital artist Christopher Smith, who posted it on his Flickr page in 2010. Chris never set out to fool anyone, as he explained, he's just enjoyed a long-time interest in cryptozoology and the legend of the lost Thunderbird photo. Chris elaborated on the Vivid Visuals website, I did indeed create this image. I put it up on my Flickr page a while back and it was stolen and appeared on a few websites making various claims about its authenticity. Most intelligent discussions I've seen have concluded correctly that it's fake as I deliberately used fruit bat wings for it which are anatomically different to a pterodactyl, less finger bones. It has been fun watching it taking on a life of its own although I never intended to pass it off as real. Chris generously granted permission to republish his wonderful creation on ThunderbirdPhoto.com. Cryptozoologist Carl Schuker revealed the origin of this image in 2015. The pair of Civil War pterosaur images shown in this video are among the most shared and often believed variants of the missing Thunderbird photo. They seem to have entered into conversation the idea that the infamous photo shows Civil War era soldiers rather than the traditional frontiersmen. Jonathan David Whitcomb, author and proponent of modern living pterosaurs, also known as Ropens, wrote in 2017 that he considered the first photo a hoax, but concluded after thorough examination that the second photo, dubbed PTP for pterosaur photo, was genuine. Whitcomb recalled seeing the photograph in his youth and wrote that others shared a similar memory. However, in 2018, Wickham withdrew his support for the PTP image as evidence for a living pterosaur in the 19th century after learning that the left wing appeared to have been sourced from the computer-animated BBC documentary, Walking with Dinosaurs. Also in 2018, Brian Dunning investigated and revealed the true origin of these images on Skeptoid. Both were created for the 2000-2001 Fox television show Freaky Links, a short-lived science fiction series about paranormal investigators. As Dunning reported, both images were featured on Freakopedia, a companion website to the show, presented as the main character's diary. The PTP photo itself was displayed in the fourth episode of the series, Coelacanth This, as the characters discuss the Thunderbird legend. The photo with the flatter pterosaur was the first attempt by Hickson Films, creator of Freaky Links. But the end result wasn't as dynamic as they had hoped, and they also had not obtained the necessary talent release forms. So, a second photo was commissioned with actors who had signed the proper paperwork and new artwork by E equals MC Squared Digital, wrote Dunning. It should be noted that both images are copyright 2020th Century Fox Film Corporation and Regency Entertainment. Lou Paradise, in a provocative thesis about living pterosaurs, claimed that efforts to prove the PTP photo as originating from Freaky Links are a conspiracy orchestrated by the NWO, globalist, evolutionary thought beliefs, to obfuscate a genuine photo of an 1864 Duranodon shot down during the Civil War near Vicksburg and published in a 1960s book that called it an unknown bird or monster. So, make of all that what you will. 
The pterosaur prop from the first photo was acquired by Lorraine Coleman and is now on display at the International Cryptozoology Museum in Portland, Maine. Dr. Carl Schuker, Thunderbird photo debunking expert, called out this image on his Schuker Nature blog in 2020. While recognizing it as an obvious fake, Schuker tasked himself with determining where the various elements had originated. He tracked the edited image online back to 2017, at a link no longer available. He then found the original, modern photo of the barn, a photograph dating back to 2010 which had been significantly altered in the Thunderbird image. The creature's wings were sourced from stock art of a fruit bat. On top of that, 
it's hard not to notice that the Thunderbird in this image looks a bit like a Muppet. This is another Thunderbird photo fake expertly and thoroughly debunked by Dr. Carl Schuker. He quickly discovered the original image of hunters posed in front of a pterodactyl-less building on a website that showcases vintage hunting photos. Brilliantly, he deduced that the pteranodon itself was an exact match to a model kit released by Ray Vale in the 1970s. Above TopSecret.com user BlueShift posted this image on April 14, 2014, writing, I'm afraid I don't remember where I picked this one up. Quite a few years ago probably from some paranormal site that may not even be around anymore. But it's obviously fake. In an excellent 2017 analysis on the myth of 19th century pterodactyls on the website Dinosaur Home, paleontology student Karnoff Rocks exposed the digital manipulation present in this image. Not only is the creature an exact match for a model of a pterodactylus, but the hoaxer made a huge oversight in editing what was originally a photo of deer hunters with their recent gills. Can you spot it? Between the third and fourth hunters from the left, remnant deer hooves float magically in the air. That is a shame, because it is otherwise an excellent fake. The identity of the artist is uncertain, but the image dates back to at least 2011. The original photo is dated to 1951 Wisconsin. Jay Cooney first pointed out the model used for the creature on his Bizarre Zoology blog in 2014. This image occasionally pops up online as being the lost Thunderbird photo. It's actually cropped from the cover art for Strange Magazine No. 21, a digital-only edition from Fall 2000 that contained the first part of editor Mark Kervinsky's extensive report on the Thunderbird photo, Cowboys and Dragons. Nowhere in the pages of Strange Magazine was this image ever presented as being a real candidate for the photo. In actuality, this stunning image was created by Strange Magazine's art director, Greg Snook. He utilized a 3D computer model of a pterodactyl, textured it and rotated it for use as both the image of the Thunderbird flying and suspended from the barn wall. For the Cowboys, Snook created a composite from several vintage photographs. He said he only noticed later that one of the men in the image is actually Calamity Jane, the cover was a layering of several elements in Photoshop, with various effects applied to individual layers. The finished cover evoked the feeling of flipping through a stack of old adventure magazines and stumbling across the Thunderbird photo. The artist slyly included the Argosy magazine logo visible on another magazine poking out from the pile. Snook generously shared his original version of the Thunderbird photo seen here as it looked before its integration into the strange magazine cover. Photoshop, obviously, done for a side project, explained DeviantArt creator Hubbellerton. Made the puppet myself for said project, everything else is stock Civil War photography. The artist posted this image on DeviantArt in 2017. The mysterious Alan G. submitted this photocopy to Strange Magazine and it was published in issue number 15. Spring 1995. Art director Greg Snook suspected it was a cut and paste collaging of different elements. Editor Mark Kervinsky thought the lack of text around the photo was suspicious, since it was supposed to have been copied from a book, people, places, and phenomena. In the next issue, Kervinsky reported he did discover a book called First Photographs with that subtitle, a collection of early photographs. Alas! The book did not contain Alan G's photograph. Dr. Carl Schuker examined the image and determined that the telltale, and anatomically inaccurate, short-beaked pterosaur appeared to have originated from a model of the beast pictured in the multi-volume encyclopedia, The Unexplained, edited by Peter Brooksmith and released in the 1980s. Schuker later wrote that this image appeared to be the first Thunderbird photo fake, and it was also the first of many that he debunked. Eduardo Valdez Javia is a phenomenally talented digital artist who specializes in photo manipulation based in horror and surrealism. Inspired by the lost Thunderbird photo, he created a haunting, and convincing, image of soldiers posing with the corpse of a Hellkite, a lost avian ancestor, during the Mexican Revolution in 1911. The Hellkite is a community-created cryptid in which members create and post evidence of its existence. You can see the photo on Valdez Javier's Twitter thread about the Hellkite project, and view his other artwork in the same genre on his website.
Valdivia Art. In 2011, a user named CuriousFace97 posted this photo on unexplainedmysteries.com, claiming they had found it on their father's computer. Some people said they were impressed, and claimed it was the closest so far to the real Thunderbird photo that they remembered. However, CuriousFace97 soon revealed that they asked their father about the image, and he said he had created it due to an interest in the mystery of the Thunderbird photo. Whatever the case, this image remains a haunting candidate. This missing Thunderbird photo mock-up was posted by user BlueShift on AboveTopSecret.com in 2019. BlueShift explained that the real Thunderbird photo is supposed to be more like this, but with a bigger barn and bird. To us, it kind of looks like a turkey vulture photo bomb. While this version of the missing Thunderbird photo is not especially compelling, the origin of this Thunderbird picture is a little hazy. The earliest instance of this image that we have found is from 2015, on a Russian language site called Crypto Planet. However, Thunderbirdphoto.com was able to uncover a mash for the original photograph of the soldiers. The photo depicts a Union regimental fife and drum corps during the American Civil War. The bird appears to be a turkey vulture, its back facing the camera. The discovery of the original photograph of the fife and drum corps is more than enough for us to consider this photo debunked. Also, this image does not match the memories that people have of the genuine Thunderbird photo. The drums are a prominent feature that witnesses would likely recall. Yet another Thunderbird photo mock-up, this one was created by Atlantis and posted on AboveTopSecret.com in 2013. Atlantis said it was a reconstruction of the photo they believed they saw in a book about cryptids. Atlantis, who is from the Netherlands, was convinced they saw the original in a Dutch version of a Reader's Digest book called Mr. Roos Wezens, in English, Mysterious Creatures. This image is close to what some people remember. The origin of this photo of a small, possibly child, cowboy holding a tiny pterosaur is a bit of a mystery. Lou Paradise, in a provocative thesis about living pterosaurs, claims this is an image of a rampharynchoid pterosaur that was published in a 1970s book titled Was Earth Visited by Aliens? They provide a scan showing surrounding text, and mention a photo credit for the American Museum of National History. We have yet to find any reference to this book that isn't from this article. Redditor, Thunderbird photo researcher and good friend of this site, PME Rears, discovered that the text supposedly from was Earth visited by aliens? Was copied mostly verbatim from an article about the brain capacity of Cro-Magnon man versus modern man. This seems to have been lifted from an article called Mankind, Creation of the Space Gods by Robin Collins which appeared on the Paranoia magazine website in 2018 but was originally published in the October 1976 edition of UFO Report, a periodical compiled by the editors of Saga magazine. Collins also used this text in his 1974 book, Did Spacemen Colonize the Earth? Sound a little familiar? However, the photo of the cowboy and pterosaur does not appear in the book. The relevant issue of UFO report similarly lacks said photo. The conclusion at this point is that the image was doctored to show the pterosaur photo surrounded by unrelated text pulled from Collins' writing. The text and the image appears to be sourced directly from Did Spacemen Colonize the Earth? Or the print version of Mankind, Creation of the Space Gods and UFO Report, which notes it is a reprint from Collins' book, rather than the later online editions of the article. Even though the passages are very similar, one notable difference is the phrase, can the archaeologists really say with certainty, which appears in the image, in the book and in the original print article. In the online version, that sentence starts with, do archaeologists really say with certainty? Karnoff Rocks of Dinosaur Home offered an analysis of the small cowboy photo, this one does not appear to have any signs of tampering or editing. Rather, it is a poor rubber model of a pterosaur that was used. The head is much too small for the body, there are no signs of structure in the wings, and there is no evidence of legs. In any case, this is clearly not the Thunderbird photo, but it is certainly an int California's giant sequoia trees have long been a magnet for tourist photographs, often with a group of people posed fingertip to fingertip to demonstrate the enormous width of these largest trees on Earth. 
it has been suggested that vintage photos of this nature might be an ingredient in the memory stew that forms people's impressions of the missing Thunderbird photograph. Fellow researcher PM Me Your Ears created the following mock-up to demonstrate what a Thunderbird photo incorporating a redwood tree might look like. A splendid artistic interpretation of the Thunderbird photo, if it actually existed, states the caption. It was created by Ryan Doan for Weird Arizona, a 2007 book written by Wesley Treat, Mark Moran, and Mark Sermon. The book contains a two-page spread about the missing Thunderbird photo with a thorough overview of the tale provided by Troy Taylor. This photo depicts a life-sized silhouette of Argentavis magnificence on display at the Los Angeles County Museum, per Dr. Carl Schuker in his book, Still in Search of Prehistoric Survivors. Argentavis, also called the Giant Territorn, was the heaviest bird known to have ever existed and was also one of the largest, with a wingspan that has been estimated to have reached more than 26 feet over 21 feet in more conservative calculations. This monster bird lived during the late Miocene, between about 6.8 to 9 million years ago. Standing in front of the cutout is Dr. Kenneth Campbell, current curator emeritus of ornithology for the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles County and co-discoverer of Argentavis. Dinosaur home blogger Carnalfa Rocks, in the myth of 19th century pterodactyls stated that this photograph was circulated in mid-20th century encyclopedias. Vague memories of this image, coupled with descriptions of the legendary photo, could have created false memories in which people thought they saw the Thunderbird photo in a book at some point in the past, suggested Carnal for Rocks. Some witnesses say the size of the bird in this photograph matches what they remember of the legendary Thunderbird picture, even if the photo itself does not. Dr. Carl Schuker proposed that this photograph of a marabou stork with African tribesmen, published and seen widely in a 1972 edition of the Guinness Book of Records, might be the type of image that triggers false memories about the missing Thunderbird photo. One hears or reads a description of the legendary photo, vaguely recalls seeing a similar picture, and the brain combines these images into one as it files them away in our memory banks. This photo shows a lamb or gyre bearded vulture, shot in Tibet in 1925. It is just one example of countless trophy photos of large birds that have been produced over the decades and could serve as a potential trigger. The third photo, printed in an Indiana newspaper, depicts what is stated to be an eagle killed near Furter, Colorado, now a ghost town, in 1919. It contains the matching elements of a bird nailed to a wall with a hunter posed in front of it. The bird had a wingspan of 7 feet, 8 inches, according to the article. Finally, this photograph of a giant devil ray, also known as a devil fish, was printed in newspapers in 1933. According to Snopes, it depicts a real taxidermy specimen of a devil ray, measuring 20 feet in width, and captured off the coast of New Jersey. It is included here because of this widely seen image's resemblance to the Thunderbird photo. Look no further, ladies and gentlemen, the true Thunderbird photo has been found.